as uh, probably the level two occupies the highest weightage for this equity uh, investments uh, probably it, uh, in level two it goes even up to 20 to 30 percent uh, kind of a weightage so uh, the level one focuses primarily on the conceptual aspects relating to the equity securities equity markets and uh, some basic uh, valuation mechanisms and very basics kind of stuff whereas in level two it entirely deals with the valuation aspects itself how do you value a equity security so from this standpoint this uh, subject has uh, been allotted uh, six different uh, readings and uh, the first of it is understanding the market organization equity markets i mean it's a complete financial market here it's just not the equity the entire financial markets how are they organized and what is their structure so to start with whenever we talk about a financial system of a country right in india also if we see <coughs> the typical financial system every person or every company should be able to do these kind of activities very effectively that is where we say the financial system of the country is efficient people should be able to save their money and corresponding to the saving they should be able to get some kind of return the people should be able to borrow the money at least uh, quite comfortably from various sources and uh, companies should be able to raise equity capital for running their businesses that is what we constitute the entire financial system of the country where there is some kind of uh, saving process borrowing and lending process investing in the form of uh, equity capital and people should be able to <coughs> people are probably the lender should be able to assess the risk of the various uh, parties and they should be able to do a proper risk management and uh, even the buying and selling the transactions process should be very much efficient so one party should be able to pay which means uh, the rupee or whatever is the currency it should have some meaning associated with it people one person should be able to give some currency and he should get some kind of uh, asset in exchange for that so all these things and that too the information efficiency should very much be there which means probably uh, <clears throat> the news and i mean corresponding to the news people buying more selling more such kind of uh, transactional efficiency or informational efficiency is also very much important as a part of any financial system so if all these things are very effective in any particular country we say that particular country's financial uh, system is more and more efficient right whenever people want to save they should have avenues to save and corresponding to that saving they should be adequately compensated whenever people want to borrow there should be some mechanisms either banks or some other sources so there should be a kind of balancing across and for the bank they should have another mechanism of investing that money so it's a kind of a rotation process that uh, should be there as a part of the system on that entire thing is what constitutes the financial system of a country and whenever we talk about efficiency associated with the financial system we talk about all these things to be <clears throat> pretty much comfortable for each and every participant in the system now if we see some of the typical markets we can classify them under various criteria financial assets versus real assets most of the transactions when i say financial assets we have stock markets we have bond markets which are purely financials we have a derivatives market purely financial assets which means they don't have a physical presence purely accounts kind of transactions right money from my account goes off my dmat account is credited so it's purely from that standpoint whereas uh, when i talk about a real asset based market probably commodities or real estate where our gold i'm possessing something some assets are physical in nature which i can buy and sell there are there is a mechanism to buy and sell those kind of stuff as well as financial assets like stocks bonds mutual funds 
these are the various uh, financial assets that are possible where the buying and selling of those things is possible then <coughs> we are also talking about the markets debt versus equity where there is a lot of loans given versus equity investments done so there are some companies where which raise capital through loans some companies which raise capital only through equities some companies which do through both the mechanisms but markets wise see once they raise the capital those particular shares or bonds they are traded on the capital markets like stock exchanges or in these kind of uh, avenues they are tradable so the securities wise we can come across debt versus equity kind of securities some kind of securities are there which are exchange traded versus private right probably real estate we don't have any exchange for real estate transactions in india right it's purely between two parties whereas uh, for stocks there is an exchange there is a a, a, a bombay stock exchange or a, a, a national stock exchange or any of these kind of exchanges that are present <coughs> so we have those kind of ex some securities are traded over the exchange whereas some of them they are traded uh, uh, they are private and the transactions are merely between two parties so even that kind of a classification we can see for the markets then okay derivatives we haven't uh, touched upon still but in the derivatives markets also we have the derivatives on financials like probably there are derivatives markets uh, dealing with stocks stock derivatives stock futures stock uh, options so are uh, probably index futures these are all financials like bond futures or probably uh, the interest rate uh, futures currency futures these are all typically the non physical which is more of a financial derivatives kind of market whereas we also have a physical derivatives market like gold futures commodity futures commodity options these are all going into physical derivatives kind of market so we have markets for those kind of securities we can also classify as spot versus future delivery derivatives markets are all future delivery markets whereas spot is probably i'm buying and selling uh, any i can buy a currency today i can buy uh, commodity today a lot of transactions can happen today and if the same thing happens in future we call it as uh, the derivatives market so the detail we'll uh, look at it when we talk about the derivatives but simple uh, word for derivatives markets are typically the future delivery kind of markets are all classified under the derivatives kind of markets then we have a primary versus secondary market all ipos and all come under the primary market whereas uh, exchange traded kind of things once uh, the security is issued the trading that happens on it happens in a secondary market but the first time when a, a share or a bond is issued to the public it comes under the primary market where the direct interaction comes from the company to the public whereas after that it is purely traded on the secondary uh, market uh, so we have some primary market some on the secondary market then there is a classification on money market versus capital market money market is all trades which are maturing within less than one year like treasury bills co commercial papers certificate of deposits we have seen uh, in our uh, in our uh, uh, working capital management uh, chapter various kind of money market uh, instruments that are available so all these things versus capital markets is wherever the investments are typically for a longer term period stocks bonds and all they get classified under the capital market kind of securities then traditional investment markets versus the alternative investments traditional investments are generally the stocks and bonds which are typically covered by cfa whereas alternate investments market they are just touched upon by cfa but not heavy depth into the the alternate investments markets whether it is uh, real estate or commodities or uh, uh, hedge funds or mutual funds right these kind of things they are just touched upon by cfa as uh, 
I mean, in mutual fund, you can very well uh, create again a combinations of everything. I mean, they come, they come again into the traditional uh, market also as well as into the alternate itself. But all these real estates, right, or uh, you can talk about all commodities, they all come under the alternate private equities. To some extent, they come under uh, uh, the traditional also, but they are slightly different from traditional, the way they operate. So they all come under as a part of the alternate investments kind of markets. So CFA just touch bases the concepts of all these, but not more in depth. Now, when we talk about uh, different types of instruments, uh, earlier we have talked about different types of markets. Now, when I look at uh, various types of instruments that are available in different markets, we call them by different names. Securities is uh, something which is uh, more to do with financial assets. We call them as securities like bonds, equities. We, are, we call all of them like mutual funds, which are more of financial related stuff. We call all of them as securities. The very common word, see for agricultural and physical things, we don't call them as securities. We call them as commodities. So security is something which is more to do with a financial uh, asset kind of stuff. Either the fixed income securities like bonds and all or equity securities like common stock or preferred stock kind of stuff or it could be pooled vehicles like your mutual funds, hedge funds, any of the funds. They all come under the various securities for us. Then we use a name called contracts especially for derivatives and insurance. All the derivative products like forwards, futures, swaps and options, we call them as contracts. They are not securities. We call them as contracts because uh, they are merely nothing but agreements. Agreements for buying and selling something in future at a price decided today. So they are merely contracts and uh, insurance is also more like a contract. So we don't call them as securities kind of word. We call them as contracts. Then we also have commodities. It could be agri commodities or industrial commodities or even precious metals. They are all different kinds of commodities. Agricultural generally we have all these bajra, maize, corn kind of uh, commodities all come under agricultural commodities. Then we have industrial uh, commodities uh, like uh, iron and uh, uh, zinc, nickel kind of which are heavily used as a part of industry. Then we also have uh, precious metals like gold, silver, platinum kind of uh, commodities and uh, even energy products like uh, petrol or oil, natural gas, all these things come under the energy kind. All these commodities, they are traded either in the spot market or in the futures market also. Most of these commodities are traded even in the futures market also. And you can very well buy them in the spot market also. So both markets exist for almost all these commodities. Then the fourth set of instruments we always deal with is the currencies. Like dollar, pound kind of uh, euros and all. Even for them, you can buy in the spot market or in the futures market. To go to any dealer, he'll give you dollars immediately for the rupee. That is the spot market. Or you can enter into a forex uh, for an exchange. And you can uh, go for buying it after one month, but fixing the deal today itself. That's like a forward market kind of stuff. Then, we have, in the entire financial system, we have some intermediaries also, like your brokers. Okay, there is a difference between uh, the broker as well as uh, agents in a lot of scenarios. 